We're exploring early medieval timber conversion processes, by which I mean um, turning a log in the round into a squared off beam that's straight and plumb that you can then use for timber framing. They started off with a, a log, much like this one you can see in front of us here, uh, which would be in the round. The bark would come off and the next job is to then ping a line on, which is a, a method of using a, a taut string which is covered in chalk or charcoal that then dropped onto the wood and it will describe a line as you can see um, the white line on this log. And you do that on two faces um, opposite each other at a, a, a distance, fixed distance apart to create the line that you'd work to. And then the next part of the process is, is all done with axe by hand. So that's uh, relatively hard work. Uh, and the process starts with um, putting scores in, which you can see a series of them on this side already, they're also called joggles. They're put in on both sides, and after that you need to take the wood off in between them, and that's done either with a similar axe or with what's called a broad axe or a side axe, a large axe. And that's a very quick process of dropping the axe onto the wood, and then um, those big lumps often just fly off, and you'll end up with a relatively flat face. Once you've done all four of the faces like that, then you need to completely square the thing off and flatten it off, and you'll do that um, with a much um, finer, smaller tool, and then you can get a very flat face on your beam. And how do you know this is how the things were done in medieval times? That's a very good question. There's several ways of finding out. But the first way is that by actually looking at some of the original wood, and we've got some there that goes back to about 600 um, AD, some Saxon wood, looking at the wood, all these processes leave very clear diagnostic marks on the tool. So you can see where a score's been cut off, and you can see if it's just been flattened off with a broad axe, and you can see what kind of saw even has been used to, to um, process wood. That's one way of finding out. Another way is by looking at old manuscripts. Um, so this here is, is a, an adaptation of a 14th century manuscript uh, of people sawing. And and here we can see quite clearly there's a score or joggle mark there. And this chap with this big axe is then clean, has been cleaning the wood off this side of the, of the timber. And these kind of uh, images are absolutely invaluable to us because not only does it show us this guy doing this, but in the background other tools are being used, an auger, a spoon auger, a twibill from to doing the mortise, there's a crosscut saw. And in the, in the foreground there are a whole variety of other tools. There's his line for drawing the line in the first place and then this toolbox. So those kind of illustrations are really good. Uh, and also if actually you walk around an old timber framed um, building uh, and with a little bit of this knowledge you can start to spot where saw marks are, where someone's used an axe, where they've gone over, you know, overdone it with the axe. So it, it can actually sort of open up looking at a building and become much more interesting in terms of seeing the detail of the work that people have done before. Hewing is something that is probably quite old actually in terms of creating a squared off beam. So Saxons are doing a certain amount of this kind of hewing. Hewing is the work with the axe. But what we're lo looking at is a, is a process of hewing to square off a log and then sawing with a, a big saw over a trestle. Um, that starts to occur in this country in the early uh, 12th century. And, it, and at that similar time, we're starting to see a change in building um, construction from earth fast buildings where they're putting posts in the ground and building the structure above that to timber frame houses, which of course are around us today to this day they're still standing they're very very strong structures and are some of these techniques the sort of thing that people can do if they've got own their own wood um, although this is looks very simple and the tools are very simple there's a there's a little bit of technique and process to it but with a little bit of training i think probably most people could with a bit of hard graft um, have a go at doing this um, what, what we're also seeing here is just the first part of a process to, to create a squared off bulk. You may want to use that bulk as is, as a timber in whatever you're making, but also you may want to turn it into planks, or you might even want to turn it into some smaller timbers, and that's when you'd use the, the seesaw, which is this process here. Would the medieval builders have used just oak, or would they have used other woods as no, well? that's a good question. Here we've actually got two different types of wood. The one that um, is nearest us is oak, which is the one that uh, is most commonly heard of, known of, and in buildings, because it's such a resistant material to rot, and it grows everywhere, basically. The one behind is poplar, which is also used, but beech is used and elm is used too, so it's not just oak. You do find other, other woods. Um, used in the construction. <laughs> Our kind of purpose is to do public interpretation about the heritage, environment and archaeology. So we do lots of work in schools and we do events like this wood fair. 
Uh, and it's a way of, by doing something very practical and often by having things that people can actually do themselves. This, this is obviously something they can't, but we've got other other things people can have a go at doing. Um, it, it links them in a very physical, real way with processes from the past, and I think it's a great way of opening up um, uh, um, people's interest and, uh, and ideas about their heritage, their local heritage.